Hey guys, it's Will here. In this video, I will tell you exactly how to build an evidence-based language learning routine that you can apply really easily to become fluent in any language. Let's get started. By the way, make sure you watch this video right to the end as I'll give you an example routine to follow, telling you exactly how to split your time and giving some techniques that you can use in each of the time that you allocate to learning the language. Recently, when I was reading some applied linguistics papers, as I'm sure everyone does in their free time, not, I came across a paper that really resonated with me more than anything else I've read before about language learning, as it really matched pretty closely my own experience of learning Mandarin Chinese to fluency. It was written by Professor Paul Nation, an applied linguistics professor, and gives a really comprehensive guide on how to learn a language. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So there are four strands to this routine, and each one of them should account for about 25% of your time. They are meaning-focused inputs, meaning-focused output, language-focused learning, and fluency development. From now on, I'll refer to them as input-output study and fluency development, as otherwise it's a bit of a mouthful for me. By the way, guys, if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. So let's start with input. This means listening and reading to things that Paul Nation recommends you can understand about 95 to 98% of. In reality, that means there's only about one in 20 words that you don't understand. Now, this can be quite difficult to find, especially for Mandarin Chinese. So you may have to go for a slightly lower level of comprehensibility. A good idea is to probably take a look at graded readers as these can really help with this. Input can include activities such as reading books, listening to podcasts, watching TV series, and the key to all of this is finding content at the right level for you. Obviously this will change as you improve throughout time. You may also want to make notes of things that you don't know, so then you can use your dedicated study time which I'll explore later in order to learn them. So I remember when I had learned Chinese for about four months, I moved to Manchester and I started my medicine course and obviously this was really time intensive and I didn't have much time to dedicate to learning Chinese and I really didn't know how to get more input into my day and then I remember watching a video by Matt Slurie and he just mentioned something really obvious which is that I can start listening to podcasts every time my ears are free so for example I started listening to podcasts on my way to lectures on my way to going and meeting up with friends and I tried to make use of this spare time in every way that I could and it completely changed my Mandarin learning journey so next let's talk about output. Now, Professor Nation recommends for output to be worthwhile, it should be only about things that you're quite familiar with, so you're not constantly searching for words. But then obviously, in order to push your abilities, you should be having the opportunity to try and use new things that you've learned. Your main goal here is to try and convey meaning to the other person and activate the knowledge that you've acquired from input and study time. So you can also use this time to test out things that you've learned in different ways. So the way you can do this is, for example, if you've learn a new sentence structure, you can then try and use it in a different context to the context which you originally used it in and check whether you're using that right or not by having the native speaker in front of you and seeing whether they can understand what you are saying. As well as this, speaking can really help you notice some gaps in your knowledge which you may not even be aware of and then you can go back and use your input and study time to fill in those gaps. So examples of output could be recording yourself speaking and sending it to a native speaker, texting with native speakers and having conversations with natives and even writing in the language for example starting a diary in the, in the language and then getting a native speaker to check it. So when I first started learning Mandarin I had this really kind patient native speaker friend which would sit down every day with me in the pandemic and we'd do this across Zoom and we'd just have a conversation for an hour about loading subjects like what did I eat for breakfast and everything. So even at a low level you can start doing this and just sticking to topics that you can speak about well in order to develop your fluency. So the third strand is is study. This includes pronunciation practice, learning a bit of grammar and also intentional learning of vocab and getting corrected on your mistakes. The point of this strand is to speed up your learning from input and output and fill in any gaps that you may have. For intentional learning of vocab and grammar I'd really recommend taking sentences from your input sources and textbooks maybe when you're at a more beginner level and then learning them through Anki sentence mining. I would also recommend dedicating time to practice pronunciation by imitating native speakers regularly as well throughout your language journey but especially at the beginning. Now if you're interested in any of those areas and how to specifically go about it you're more welcome to check out our Peak Mandarin Master Pack. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So finally we have fluency development. Now this is going to look different for everyone but it's the idea of developing your fluency in each of the four areas so listening, reading, speaking and writing. It could include things like shadowing, extensive reading, retelling things you're familiar with in the language 
and Professor Nation says for it to be considered fluency practice and training there has to be no new vocab and also a bit of a push for speed so you're forcing yourself to go slightly faster than you usually would. So I'll give you an example of how I did this when learning Mandarin. When I had learned for roughly a year I got really good at talking about language learning because nearly every new Chinese friend I met would ask me in detail as they wanted to know about how they could apply my techniques in order to learn English more efficiently and also it was around this time that I started making loads of YouTube videos about this topic which helped me even further. Now for me at the time language learning didn't really contain that much new vocabulary so I could stick to vocabulary that I knew and I was also trying to speak as fluently as possible so it has both of those prerequisites. So now let's look at what an example routine could look like for you. If you're able to commit around eight hours a week to language learning which is kind of the time I'd recommend, just over an hour a day that would be. First of all you could do two hours a week of speaking practice, two hours a week of input, two hours a week of dedicated study and finally two hours a week of fluency practice. Now let's look at each one of them in a bit more detail. So for speaking practice you could do this with a tutor who would be able to give you feedback and would be able to cater to your level a bit better or if you're fortunate as I was if you are able to have a native friend who's able who's quite patient and able to rephrase things for you and help you and guide you as you go along, that would also be another option. For input, this would involve lots of listening and reading within that dedicated two hours. And I would recommend as you go about doing this, that you make a note of things that you want to go over in your dedicated study time. And this would be key phrases and sentences that you're getting from these sources of input. For the dedicated study, this would be things like Anki for vocab and grammar, and imitation for pronunciation practice, and going over mistakes and corrections so you acquired in your speaking practice your output so when you're corrected on these mistakes you can then use your dedicated study time to go over them again and add them into Anki to help with your word order. And finally for fluency practice this could be things like listening to familiar stories read out by a native speaker at native speeds to get yourself listening fluently. Alternatively it could be recording yourself about familiar topics, speaking as fluently as you can about them, not trying to use any new vocab and then asking natives for feedback. So one of the things that's really helped me with this fluency practice element of Poor Nations framework is recording videos in fluent Mandarin on my YouTube channel and doing my best to have high standards for those. Now if you're interested in doing something similar to that to help you with that, on the I'm Learning Mandarin podcast Misha is trying to support learners to produce their own five to six minute podcast episode on things that they're familiar with in fluent Mandarin. Now if you'd like to get involved in that you can contact Misha info at peakmandarin.com and I'll leave uh, the email address below so that you can get involved. The final point I want to make is these ratios, this 25% rule, it's going to be kind of different at different times but average out to 25% overall. So for example at the beginning you may need more input and more dedicated study and then later on you might be doing more output and fluency training when you're at a high level to kind of polish your Mandarin or any other language that you're learning. So overall, I think this is a really good starting point for building a solid language learning routine. So definitely go and check out Professor Nation's paper. I really hope this video has been useful for you guys. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. So bye for now. Bye bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to learn how to speak fluent Chinese, but you aren't too sure how to go about it, you might want to go and check out my free newsletter on peakmandarin.com. Run by me and my friend Misha, the Peak Mandarin newsletter offers practical tips and techniques to solve all your biggest Mandarin speaking problems. It's based on what we did to become fluent in the language and what we wish our teachers had told us at a lower level. Subscribe now and we'll also send you a free copy of our 50 page ebook, telling the story of exactly how we taught ourselves to speak fluent Chinese while working and studying full time in the UK. If you're interested, you can sign up on peakmandarin.com or click the link in the description below. Bye for now.